next to an Australian Holden Ute, except I'm in California. So you're probably thinking how and why and can you get one? Today, I'll answer all of those questions. First, a little history. The car-based pickup truck was popular in the United States in the 1960s and the 1970s. There was the Chevy El Camino and the Ford Ranchero, and in the 1980s, Chrysler even tried to get in on the game with the horrible Dodge Rampage. But while this whole thing died out in the United States, it caught on in Australia. And in Australia, they have this, the Holden Ute. Now, this particular Ute is located here in Southern California, and it was loaned to me by a viewer. It's based on a full-size Australian sedan, except it has a pickup bed. And while some Australian people get this for utility, this one has a 6-liter V8. It has 360 horsepower. It does 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. So it's high performance, but it's also a pickup truck and a sports car. It's everything. And today I'm going to tell you why it should have been sold in the United States. But it was only sold in Australia. So how did this one get to the United States? Well, it's here thanks to a company called Left Hand Utes, located near Denver, who imports the Holden Ute body from Australia. From there, it's mated with a US car, in this case, a Pontiac G8 GT, for the engine, drivetrain, and other pieces, such as the interior in this particular Ute. You can pick one up for thirty to $60,000, depending on exactly what you want, and Left Hand Utes is in business right now, selling these the people who want them. So you're probably thinking that this is just a Pontiac G8 with a different body and a couple fewer seats. Not quite. The left hand Ute's conversion is so thorough that in some cases the Colorado State Patrol assigns it a completely different VIN number and gives it a completely new title. Basically they've created a completely new car. An awesome one. I'll start with a tour of the interior where you'll find a fairly standard center control stack and a glorious six-speed manual transmission. Look even further and you'll start to find the attention to detail that goes into this conversion. There's only two window switches instead of the four you'd find in the G8. You'll also find the accurate Ute gauge cluster that can be set to use kilometers for the odometer and the fuel range, display the gas mileage in liters per 100 kilometers, and even show kilometers per hour for the speed. There's also a Holden steering wheel, and check this out. Have you ever seen a Holden key in the United States? The owner of this car even went to the trouble of finding a leather Holden owner's manual pouch. And on a trip to Australia, he even located accurate Holden cards for the inside. Open the glove box, and he's even found an original Holden Ute brochure. In back, there's the proper badging and the proper netting for the storage behind the front seat, and it even has that tiny little window they inexplicably install in back of all the utes. And press the OnStar button, and you're not redirected to Pontiac or even General Motors, but rather... Call using... Holden Bluetooth. As you can probably tell, this conversion went off immaculately, but there are still four little tiny details that the ute enthusiast could use to tell that this wasn't a factory ute. Number one is the seats. If you had a factory ute, there'd be a little tab you could pull so that the seats fall forward and you can easily access the rear area. But because left-hand utes had to use DOT-approved seats, the seats in this car come straight out of the G8. And that means in order to access the rear area, you need to first move the seats forward with the little electronic switch and then twist them so the back part comes forward. Number two is the floor mats. Note that the Ute-specific rear floor mats included in this car don't quite line up with the seat rails from the Pontiac G8 seats. Number three, what's that, climate control back there? The Ute wouldn't have it there, but the center console comes from the Pontiac G8. And the last little detail that sets it apart from a factory ute? Look at those four doors on the dome light switch. So then we get to the back of this car, which is certainly the most practical part of it, and frankly, probably the most interesting. Right now, it's in giant trunk mode, but you can remove this cover if you want to carry around huge items. And you can carry around huge items, because this car can take up to a thousand pounds in the bed. Try carrying around a thousand pounds in the trunk of a normal car. So how do you get in the back? Actually, it's pretty easy. It's no harder than getting in the trunk of a normal car. To open the tonneau cover, just push this, lift it up, and you're in. And then to get the tailgate down, there's a little latch. Pull it. Easy enough. And once you're in the back, you'll find that it's surprisingly roomy.
Now, if you have something valuable back here, you can lock this just like you'd lock a normal trunk. Press the lock button up front, it locks the doors, and it locks the trunk so nobody can get in. Now, you also notice back here we have a tow hitch. That's right, this thing can tow. In fact, the owner of this vehicle also has a DeLorean, and he can use his ute to pull his DeLorean, thereby giving him a total of four seats. By the way, it's worth noting that there is one problem with that tonneau cover. Look in the mirror and cover, it robs you of a surprising amount of visibility. Okay, so now you've seen this thing inside and out. It's time to get it out on the road. All right, let's do this. God, it's so weird to look back there and see that. All right, here it goes, we're moving now. <laughs> wow, that was 117. The transmission is great. I really, it feels very tight. There's no play in gear. It's funny because I had an 04 CTSV, which was not actually that far before this, and also GM type vehicle. Uh, and it was, the transmission was horrid. Oh, and that sound, you really hear it. This is a serious V8. Oh. Rev matches are nice. It's not that quick to rev. The clutch is actually surprisingly heavy. Uh, it's not hard to use or kinked or weird or anything like that, but it is pretty heavy. I love the, the gear lever. God, I love putting good, good shifters into gear. It just feels so satisfying. Very quick. It feels very quick. I can't believe we're driving a pickup. That's the craziest thing. So the coolest thing about this is it really does actually feel like a car. Not only a car, it feels like a sports car. It feels like we're in a coupe. If I don't look back there, I have no idea that I'm driving anything other than like a GTO. Boy, it's quick. Nice and quick. It's so funny because I could carry a thousand pounds back there. It's like a huge, I laid down in the back of this thing and now I'm doing zero to 60 in five seconds. <laughs> So in sixth gear, just sort of cruising, not trying to do anything or go anywhere, it feels like a normal car. The ride is nice. The ride feels pretty good. Um, it certainly isn't like hardcore sports car hard. You know, I'm not, I don't feel uncomfortable. So this car is based on a full-size sedan. It's actually a little bit bigger than the G8. So, you know, that helps make it smooth things out a little bit. Oh man, the mid-range power is great. If you're in the right gear, I mean, I barely put the throttle down there, only about a quarter or a half. If you're in the right gear, you can really feel that it's like ready to get up and go. Unfortunately, this being California, we have a Prius in front of us. It really feels so low. It doesn't even really feel like a sedan. It feels like a GTO. I've driven those before, and it kind of feels like that. I can't believe when I look behind me, we got this pickup bed, and I know we can carry around. We could tow a DeLorean if we want to. It also, you know, it doesn't feel at all like it was kind of mucked together, you know? Like, we we know, obviously, that this stuff is from a G8 and the motor and then the rest of the, you know, is brought in and it's all married. But it doesn't feel like any sort of weird, stupid kid car. Um, it feels like this is exactly how it was made, how it was built, and how it was originally designed. But it is practical like a pickup truck, and it drives like a sports car. It's crazy. It doesn't even drive like a sports sedan. It drives like a coupe. I just love the idea. There's nothing I love more than cars that combine multiple things into one. Uh, and this is the kind of thing you'd never think to combine. I like SUVs that are also performance cars. I never even thought about the idea of having a, a, a sports coupe that's also a pickup truck. Like, what is that? There is a group of people who would want to buy a car like that. The owner tells me he carries his surfboards in it. So you want a you want a performance car that also carries your surfboards? Your options are limited. If you're the kind of person who doesn't need multiple seats and is constantly carrying around big stuff, then it's the best of all worlds. If you're one of those 11 people, then this is the perfect car. So there you have it. I've driven a Holden Ute in America. This thing is a performance car with a giant V8 up front that sends it zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. But it's also a pickup truck with a surprisingly usable bed. But it's not raised up like a pickup truck. Instead, it's low to the ground, so it kind of drives like a sports car. Most importantly, it's completely legal here in the United States. And yes, you can buy one today. As you can see, this conversion went off immaculate, immaculately. And in Australia, they have this, the Holden Ute. It's something. 
You ever see these people with the big iPhone, the really the, the plus size one? That's pretty big. Man. That's like having a tablet. What? Yeah. What are those people doing? They got like an iPad. They're holding like an iPad up to their ear. They got to do like two-handed. Ridiculous. They look ridiculous.